I'm gonna do a walk around the fish room today and have a have a discussion about snails. People tend to have a, a love hate relationship with snails, and uh, I've always I've always been a proponent of them. Snails that I have in here, um, I've got nerites, I've got uh, MTS Malaysian trumpet snails, I've got some mystery snails, I got some ram's horns, and I've got some common bladder snails or pond snails as they're called. Um, I guess I should point out. Get that guy back there. Got some bladders over here. Pond snails. Uh, a couple pond snails up there. That's a nearite, by the way. Zebra nearite. Um, the nearites, they won't reproduce in fresh water. They will, however, litter your tank with these little eggs everywhere. But it doesn't do any harm and it scrapes off pretty easy. A uh, mystery snail. Let me find you a mystery snail. Usually there's a big guy in here. I can find him. There's a nearite. There's my mystery snail. There he is. There's a big mystery snail for you. So I've had <clears throat> Malaysian trumpet snails in all my tanks forever. They're fantastic for rooting through your gravel. And during the daytime, you'll rarely ever see them. This tank here, there's some. Now I just turned their lights on maybe 20 minutes ago. That comes on sooner than what they usually do, so some of them might still be out. The nearites typically are, I'm sorry, the, the mystery snails, the MTS, they're typically only out at nighttime, at least mine are. Um, and they know when the lights go off. My timers go off at midnight on all my tanks. About 11 o'clock, they'll all start coming out. By midnight, the glass is covered by one. You'd swear there was a giant infestation. This tank here, when the lights have been out for an hour or two, they are, it, it's covered. Everything is covered in MTS. But when the lights are on, you rarely see them. So, I got some ram's horns. Over here. Ah, here's an example. See all the snails in here? I said, I just turned these lights on maybe 15, 20 minutes ago. So at night, it literally looks like this all the time. There's just snails everywhere. Another half hour, you won't be able to see any of these guys. They'll all go down into the sand. So when the lights are on, they spend the whole day down burrowing through the sand and doing their thing down there. Um, this tank. This tank has so many snails in it that it'll plug my filter up. I've got a FX6 down there. Now, in all fairness, I did a water, I did a clean the filter on this thing the other day, and I realized I hadn't cleaned the filter in nine months. Um, there had to have been a thousand snails in there, and the input line was literally plugged with them. But again, you can see, you can see a couple on the gravel down there. After these lights are on for a while, they'll all they all just go into the gravel and disappear. I don't see them at all. Uh, ram's horns. Get some ram's horns in here. A couple big ram's horns over here if I can find them. So this tank here I have trouble keeping snails in. <clears throat> I've got a couple Burmese border loaches in here. And all loaches, to one degree or another, don't like snails and will uh, have their way with them. So the ones that are in here are typically pretty big. Um, but you can see the floor is littered with empty snail shells that the loaches have uh, dispatched. But it's fine, they break down, it adds to calcium to the tank. Uh, my African tank here <clears throat> is primarily, primarily loaded with MTS, and again, 
you don't see any of them when the lights are on. This this light's actually been on for about an hour. So you don't see any of them anywhere. Um, Malaysian trumpet snails are excellent for keeping your gravel stirred up. Um, they're great for diatoms. If you get uh, what people reference as brown algae, which is diatoms, they're fantastic for diatoms. And uh, you can actually see in here, where you see those spots, that's a snail spot where they've parked themselves for a while and cleaned everything off. All those little spots are from snails over last night. So, like I said, the Malaysian the MTS, the Malaysian trumpet snails, they're great for diatoms, they're great for keeping your gravel stirred up. Um, they do a little bit on algae, but they're not fantastic on algae. Your nearites, your nearites are good on algae, but they're expensive and you really just can't have enough in a tank to make a giant difference. Um, all these tanks, I have different levels of algae in, to one degree or another. I'm sure everybody who's had an aquarium long enough, I mean, you're not going to get rid of algae forever. At any point in time, there's nothing wrong with algae. Much like snails, algae is beneficial to your ecosystem. It just, uh, people don't like it, how it looks. But there's no harm to snails and or algae to your aquariums. It's just unsightly. <clears throat> so, what prompted this video down here I've got a tank of endlers and there's probably way more that should be in here and I don't call out the females there's way too many big fat pregnant females and there's fry everywhere all the time and I just kind of let, let this tank run its course always but what I've noticed in this tank there's never any algae I get string algae you know filmentation filmentation algae um, but there's never algae on the glass. There's never algae on my plants. I mean, ever. I, I wipe this glass down during water changes maybe once a year. It's, it's ridiculous. So what I've been doing is when your plants, you'll get, you know, you'll get the black algae all over the leaves. And this tank is actually pretty good. I've got flying fox in here. Flying fox are great for controlling blackbeard algae. But all, most all my tanks I've got a couple flying fox and just for that reason. But in this corner over here, inside that half hollowed out rock, I've got a breeding pair of crebenzas. There's two breeding pair in here. One in that corner, one in that corner over there. The pair in this corner over here, are re the male is incredibly territorial, and he will not let anything get in this corner. So what you wind up with, this Anubius, Anubis just gets covered in algae. To the point where the leaves will just become black. So what I've been doing is once they get to that point, I'll move it down here in with my endlers. So this one you see in the corner rack back here two weeks ago was up here and you couldn't see any green on the leaves it just was black and it would eventually would have killed the plant so I put it in here for a week or two and it, it's like a it's like a new plant there is not a speck of algae on it anywhere and it grows like crazy this tank is not co2 injected this tank is co2 injected that tank is CO2 injected, and there's two on the other side of the room that are injected. But this tank is not CO2 injected at all. It's just a bunch of endlers, a cheap little, you know, Amazon um, DAF spec light, and everything grows great in here, mainly because they keep everything spotless. So this had been the only tank that I had MTS in and I had uh, pond snails, bladder snails in here. Now the upside to the bladder snails is they stay out all day long. All day long, they're on the plants, they're on the glass, they're doing their thing. Actually, you can, you can literally see the trail on there where he's been. And they're cleaning off your plants. Now I hear people say, Oh, I don't like snails because they're eating my plants, they're killing my this, they're wiping out all my plants. Um, it's been my experience that snails will eat algae and they will eat decaying plant matter, not live plant matter. 
So if you've got a leaf on something that's dying or breaking down or melting, yeah, they're going to be on there and they're going to eat it. They're basically pruning it off. I've never seen them eat live healthy plant matter. Every time I see them on my plants, like this, they're either eating algae or they're cleaning up something that's already dying. So, like I said, I started moving plants in here. I would put the, take a clean plant out of here, move it into another tank, take that dirty plant, move it in here, and I would just cycle them around to keep all my plants clean. So A, your plants being clean, they're going to grow way better than if the leaves are covered in algae. That whole photosynthesis thing is kind of important to them. So when they get dirty and nasty like this, I move them down here. They sit in here for a week and get cleaned up. And then I put it back and I've been rotating them. Well, in doing so, I've now introduced bladder snails, pond snails, into a couple of my other tanks that never had them. So let me walk over to my tetra tank over here. This tank here, for years, I would do a water change anywhere between once a week to once every three weeks. And the sides of the glass over here always had a lot of algae, enough to where I had to scrape it and clean it because it was, it was more than I wanted to look at. Same thing with this side. And of course the front would have a film of algae on it that was more than I wanted to look through and it was unsightly. You know, that went on that way for years. Since I've moved the bladder snails in here unintentionally, I have had no algae in this tank. I have not scraped the glass in this tank for over three months now. And I don't think it's because of them physically cleaning it off the glass, but I will accredit it to, to them keeping my plants clean and letting the plants grow to their full potential. Um, Anubis... Nubius doesn't, is not a fast-growing plant by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but if you keep the leaves clean, it really does grow pretty well. Um, the only thing I've got in here, I've got two versions. I've got a Nubius abarti, and I forget what that one is. I've got some Dwarf Sedge, and I've got some um, Jungle Val. Um, this, uh, this stuff grows, I, I can't, buckets, buckets every week I rip out of these tanks. Um, anyway, since the bladder snails got introduced into this tank, like I said, I have not cleaned the glass in three months. Typically within a week, these sides are full of algae and I have to scrape them down. So far, since the bladder snails are in here, I said I have not touched this glass in months. So... Since I've come on to this, like I said, that's when I started cycling my, recycling my plants. Here, here's a good example. When your leaves start looking like that, I'll move them in with my endlers and I'll let them clean them up. Um, there's a giant mystery snail for you to see right there. So this tank has... This tank's got nerites, this tank's got some mystery snails, this tank's got some bladders, this tank's got everything. Um, the only thing that's in this tank, this is a 50 gallon column, 30 inches tall. I've got a, a mated pair of angelfish, one quarry cat, uh, there's a red tailed shark who lives down under there, and flying fox, a couple autos. But this guy, he's been in here for probably five years now, and he's a little beat up right now. She laid eggs last week, and he got into it with the red-tailed shark. And the red-tailed shark doesn't bother anybody until this guy becomes a giant dickhead and just picks on him and picks on him and picks on him, and then the red-tailed shark will finally fight back. Um, he's almost lost an eye once to fighting with him, but this is the only thing that 
That one quarry cat and my flying fox are the only thing that he will not kill. He's killed everything I've put in this tank for years. I've lost dozens of garamis. I He's probably killed 50 fish. He does not like anybody in here putting the moves on Miss Angelfish. Except for this Cory Cat. I don't know why he's allowed this guy to live. The red tail Shark is just too big for him to kill. And the red tail Shark keeps to himself until he becomes a dick. Anyway, she had laid eggs all over the heater over here last week. And he was in super protective mode and just went on a rampage picking on the red tail Shark. And then the red tail Shark picked back. But anyway. This tank also gets a decent amount of algae. I've got direct sunlight exposure over there, so this side of the glass usually gets a pretty decent layer on it. It takes about two weeks. Again, since I've now got the pond, the bladder snails in here, which there aren't as many, um, there's been way less algae. And again, I credit it to swapping out these plants and keeping them clean all the time. You got snails. Throw some cuddle bone in your tank. Let's go to the bird section, buy some cheap cuddle bone, throw it in there. It breaks down eventually, but it keeps your calcium levels decent and keeps their shells in good shape. Moving over here. I have put snails in here dozens of times. Nets full of snails. I don't know what he does, but somehow he kills all the snails. Now, in all fairness, he's a... Uh, Incredibly territorial and mean. He's about a foot long, for reference. And he will attack anything that goes in this tank. He attacks when I clean the tank. He attacks when I try to clean the glass. Um, nothing survives in here, including snails. I almost never have algae in here. I get, you know, the little bit of the, you know, the black film. But I credit that to this hydroponic setup I've been on here for years. Just a little tray with a tiny pump that pumps water through it and it runs back in. Um, lucky bamboo in here. There's some pond mint. Um, and then, of course, your... Yeah, brain lapse. You know what it is. Um, and I've started putting live plants in here, and surprisingly he hasn't been messing with them at all. But I've just got so much of this Nubius that I keep breaking it off into chunks and separating it. And um, The way I keep this stuff, too, is I just zip-tie a rock to it. Zip-tie a rock to the rhizome. Um, don't ever bury the rhizome or you'll get rhizome rot and it'll die. But I just zip-tie a decent-sized rock to the rhizome. I let the roots just filter feed in the water. That way when I move it, I don't have to dig anything up. I just yank it out of there, plop it in my indoor tank, and swap them out. <clears throat> but no algae in this tank almost ever and no snails because he kills everything so I don't know the only thing I credit the algae management to is the hydroponic setup up here pothos ah, that's what it is so <clears throat> over here to my flower horn this tank has so many snails in it it's insane if I were to grab a net and just scoop up a handful of that gravel, I guarantee you, you get 50 to 100 snails in it. They are everywhere. And again, when the lights are on, you hardly see them. Um, this tank's got blackbeard algae, it always has. It's the only thing it ever grows in here that I have issues with is blackbeard algae. But you can see that rock. Now, I can't put a flying fox in here because, well, that's just not going to happen. And I can't really do anything other than the snail. Snails is the only thing, again, he doesn't bother. He's about a foot long also. Um, but I just swap out the plants every couple weeks. I'll pull this one out. And I'll put it in my handler tank and I'll let him clean it up. Down here is my crayfish tank. Um, <clears throat> I don't have much algae in here either. The, the crayfish are such incredible scavengers. There's never any excess food that lays around for any length of time. I've never vacuumed this gravel. About once a year I vacuum to see what's in there and it's spotless because they just spend all day long 
rooting around through the gravel in here and chasing fish, as you can see. It's a very rare occasion they'll actually catch a fish, but if you watch this guy, he'll grab at them all day long. But the fish are bigger than he is. Once in a while, one of the big ones in here will actually get a hold of one, but they're just they're just red tail rosies or rosy red rosies rather. So, I mean, they're just feeder minnows, but whatever. Um, these are marbled cray. They're all female and they're self cloning. <clears throat> And if you can find a spot and a crack, I guarantee you there's a crayfish in it. You got little guys. That guy's only maybe three quarters of an inch long. I say guy, they're all female. Um, but yeah, there's more crayfish in here than, and I don't know what to do with them. I keep trying to give them away to people. But I'll throw, <clears throat> I'll throw all my plants that when I do water changes, when I trim stuff back, I'll throw everything in here. Because they eat it, they're vegetarians. Um, the floaters always go first. They like the soft roots, um, so they'll eat the soft roots of all any floaters that are in here. And eventually they'll just eat it all. But there's a lot of floaters in here, there's a lot of wisteria, there's, there's literally, like I said, when I trim something out I just throw it in here, because eventually they'll eat it. Now I feed them pellets and whatever also, but they like said they'll spend all day long looking for soft roots and then eventually eventually they'll eat all the plants. Like I said, I've got plenty to keep throwing in there. <clears throat> this tank here, like I said earlier, the only algae I get is in this corner. Because, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> my breeding pair of cribs won't let anybody over here. Except for the snails. Um, that jungle valve started off as one sprig, now it's like a three foot long piece. There's probably 25 cribs in here. You can't see them because they're literally hiding everywhere. But if I zoom you in, there's one there, there's one there's back in the weeds. There's one over there back in the weeds. There's one way back in there in the weeds. And all these cracks and rocks down here, they're hiding in. So they have all got their little area that they hide in. And any time you look in here and all you see is my dither fish. I've got some Harlequin rest borers and some white clouds. They're always out. But again, if you look, there's cribs everywhere. <laughs> This is my circus tank. This is my catch-all. Plants in here are always beat up because there's a silver dollar in here. And anyone who's got a silver dollar knows they're a swimming lawnmower. There is no plant safe from him. So all the plants here always look chewed up to some degree and beat up and whatnot, but so be it. The grow out tanks down here. Africans and I'm still trying to get rid of. Um, I get algae in these because there's very few snails in there. Um, and the only thing that does save me here are these floaters. It's the greatest stuff ever. If you've used um, frog bit, you know it's terrible. It'll overtake your house. It gets everywhere. You can't get rid of it. It's, it's horrible. It's like a plague. These are water spangles or uh, salvina minima. It's about the size they get, they're floaters, so they will always do better at controlling nitrates than any plant that is submerged ever, because they have the aerial benefit. They don't, they're not limited by CO2. There's more CO2 in the air that's in your home than will ever be underwater, even injected. So they got these nice little roots, which. The Africans will eventually chew off and then they eat the leaves, eat everything. <clears throat> um, it's the greatest floater ever. If you want floating plants but don't want, uh, don't want anything with the word frog in it, and I don't blame you, this is where you go. Got some in here too. So these guys will eat it. But what I do is I keep a batch in here. This tank is injected. 
So that little bit you see there, I did water changes maybe three, four days ago. And I'll pull all but half a dozen of them out, out of here. And within three weeks, this 75 gallon tank will be 75% covered in the top. There'll be so much in here. Like all of this in this 20 gallon came out of my last water change. All that did, all of this did, and there's still all that up there. It's the greatest floater ever. If you want a floating plant, give it a try. Water Spangles, Salvina Minima. Excellent, highly recommended. Um, this grow tank, same as the one next to it, nothing but snails. And I do deal with some level of algae in there. It's not so much algae as it's just like, you know, the, the biofilm you get on everything. My 125 African tank here. Um, I don't get algae so much. I get di diatoms in here. Um, I think you, see, you can see the brown. And you can literally see where the snails have been. I have issue with diatoms in here, despite the fact this tank has been set up for years. But it's more of a phosphates issue. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of snails in here that surprisingly they don't bother. And I am going to try moving some bladder snails in here to see uh, to see how that works. See if you look back here, see all those trails? Those are all snail trails from last night when they were out. Get out of the way. So that's literally snail trails in the diatoms that are on the waterfall weir over the, the overflow weir. I think you guys that watch my videos, it's probably been a year. I talked, this is my, my hospital tank, my, where is he? So I talked about the tumor this guy had. And it's been probably a year since I've talked about him. He's still in here. He still has the tumor. And uh, he's just doing his thing in here. I don't know what to do with him. The tumor shouldn't be an issue to other fish. It's not like they're going to get tumors. Tumors aren't spread like that. Um, but it just looks terrible. And I'm afraid how it looks, it would open him up to secondary issues, secondary infections and whatnot. It's, it's pretty hairy and nasty. But he's been plugging along in here. Like I said, for probably a year now. Him and a bunch of bladder snails. That's all that's in here. Him, some bladder snails, little java moss. That's about it. There's some shrimp in here somewhere, but. There's shrimp. I don't eat that giant massive java moss. This is all ram's horns. This is almost all, well, there's pond snails in here too now. But there's nothing but ram's horns in here. I think what I'm going to do tonight is once the lights go out, I'll give her an hour or two, and then I'm going I'm to run around and shoot a quick two or three minute video just to show you the amount of snails that are really in these tanks. Because I, I don't, people are so, you see on the posts and the forums all the time, of, oh, how do you get rid of snails? I'm infested with snails, they're everywhere. This tank has more snails in it than you will ever imagine. But now that the lights have been on for a little while, you see a couple here and there. But when the lights go out tonight, you're not going to believe how many are in here. You want to see an infestation. I'll show you an infestation. Snails will populate to the amount of food they have. Main reason for snail infestations, and I'm air quoting, is overfeeding. And I'm guilty of overfeeding this guy. He's huge. And he's the pickiest eater in the world. I don't care what I throw in here. He'll eat a little bit of it, then he waits. And then he waits, and then he waits. And then 20 minutes later, he'll pick at something else. And he waits, and he waits, and he waits. Then he picks at something else, and he waits, and he waits. I don't know how he maintains the size 
with his eating habits. I mean, he's probably three inches thick and you know, every bit of 12 inches long. He's a big fathead. And he's the pickiest eater ever. Stark contrast to this bottomless pit. I don't care what I throw in here, it doesn't last five seconds. He's literally ripped a spoon out of my hand. I, you know, take a spoon and I grab some pellets and I dip them in. He's literally ripped a spoon out of my hand. He also has a ping pong ball. And regularly he bats that thing around and attacks it and chases it all over the tank. It's kind of like watching the dolphin show. But, uh, yeah, he is ridiculously territorial and just attacks everything. But, you know, he doesn't leave any food laying around, that's for sure. It's part of the reason I can't keep snails in here. I don't know if it's just because he eats everything so quick that there's literally nothing for them to eat, or is he somehow killing the snails? Because he redecorates this tank all the time. By the time I get water change, do water changes, all that gravel in the back will be gone. There's a giant mound on the front of the glass. He builds a huge berm like he doesn't want to look at me. Not that I can blame him, but, you know, kind of rude. All right, I think I'm done ranting about snails. Oh, cuttlebone. I did touch on that. Um, <clears throat> cuttlebone, great for snails, great for calcium. Most all of my tanks I run crushed coral in to some degree. Also, obviously, my big, my big, my big cichlids, uh, my Africans, the, the the red devil over there, flower horn, are all crushed coral. But even in my my sand tanks, I'll throw a crushed coral in. It's uh, <coughs> it's good buffering for your KH. It keeps your pH stable. Um, another great thing I know I've talked about it before is calcium betonite clay. Um, also branded as koi clay if you want to pay five times as much. You get this on Amazon. Uh, it's that calcium betonite clay. It's excellent. Obviously loaded with calcium. A bunch of other fantastic minerals. It's a natural flocculent. But every other water change, what I do is I'll put, I'll put three or four table, teaspoons in here in a shaker bottle shake it up and that'll just give a, a splash in there like they'll show you it'll cloud up your water for a couple hours but it, it afterwards it is the most crystal clear water ever that's what it looks like so just put a splash in there like I said it's gonna cloud the water up for a few hours but once it runs through and settles out um, I said it's a natural flocculent and it really, really clarifies your water. It's also excellent for your fish. They'll color up better. <coughs> I said there's a plethora of fantastic minerals that are good for them in there. And it's, it said stuff's cheap if you buy it, you know, just don't buy it under the brand or the label of koi clay because, you know, you pay the, the fish tax on everything. And like I said, in an hour or two, it'll completely be, it'll be completely gone. All right, I think I'm done. Oh, still have that yeah, cuttlebone. Third time now. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Yeah, cuttlebone. See, birds love it. I think it's like three bucks for a package of these things, and I just I'll break off chunks and I'll throw them in all my tanks. So it's good to keep your calcium up, buffers your cage, and uh, your snails love it. All right. End of rant. Take care.